Greetings, world. It's a whole new day, a whole new week. And there's always a promise of excitement and fantasticness um, each time a new week begins. On the weekend, I had occasion to speak to my mummy, mummy dear, as you get to know about her as you, as you and I connect more frequently on this platform. And every time I read a book, I hand over to her because she also loves reading, but she also does prefer books with big fonts, like size 24, size 28. She's 81, so I love that we can share books. So today, or not today, yesterday, she then says to me, thank you for sending me this book, but why do you read sad books? Because uh, the book she had just finished reading was about a lady who, after many years of searching, finally discovered that her grandfather had molested her mother. So basically, her grandfather was her father and her mother her sister. I know it's a, it's a mind twist, but um, we then had a conversation um, about what it meant and the pain that comes from disclosure, lack of disclosure. But I was just correcting her. I said, no, Ma, it's not that I like sad books. Um, I like stories that are told about people who overcome stuff because I find that's so encouraging and so inspiring. Sometimes we look around us and all we see are people who are posting what they think is their best version of themselves. Some others are even caught out in lies, fabricating lies that look good um, on social platforms. So for me, this idea of human beings who dig deep um, into the belly of their own spirits to overcome things that may be crippling and disabling and limiting to many others serve as inspiration for me. So it's not that, I guess, <laughs> it's not that the books are sad, it's just that the stories are sad, but they always end up on a very high note. So I was wondering um, what you think you have to overcome, you know, and what you've been working um, to overcome. For me, the work is an everyday process. Even when I'm invited to speak either to corporates or to people in middle management or commencement speeches or as we call it in South Africa, graduation night, I'm always mindful about not presenting myself as somebody who's figured it all out because I actually haven't. Um, so I'm a work in progress and uh, the thoughts the opinions I share on this platform are mine. They are not meant to be an instruction or a template for anybody else out there. But I just share these things that hopefully if you find inspiration in them, fantastic. And if not, that's also fantastic because our journeys are not always going to be aligned. So what I have had to think about uh, continuously um, as a thing to overcome is just how to make it easier to give trust so you don't make people earn your trust but just to give it because when I give it then the obligation is on the other person to live up to it and to prove that I was correct in trusting them in the first place so from sad stories to triumphant endings uh, from doubtful beginnings to confident um, outcomes I hope that this week and the days ahead present you with opportunity and just challenge yourself with care and compassion, but challenge yourself um, with the things that you know no longer serve you, that you have the strength and the bravery um, to overcome. It's a work in progress, so please don't be impatient with yourself. Um, you know, it's practice that makes you good. So I hope you will stay in flow, in spirit, uh, and in communion with yourself. So that as you work to overcome, as you work to raise yourself to a highest um, version, as you imagine it for yourself, that you continue to do that with a sense of gentleness to yourself, right? Because when we are unkind to ourselves, we almost always give the world permission to be unkind to. So in the days ahead, in the weeks ahead, as always, I wish you courage and clarity. Until next time. Namaste.